Hi everybody, my name is Greg Anderson and today I want to talk about this uh, NV heat wall mounted heating unit that we bought. Our problem was we've got this room, this one room that it's in the basement, the ductwork is in the ceiling, and even though there's a vent for that room, for some reason that one room is just a little bit cooler in the winter than all the other rooms. It's kind of farthest away from the furnace and well, I suppose we could get an expert in here to really tear the whole system apart and figure out what's wrong with uh, the ductwork to that room, or maybe that's just the way that room's always going to be. Uh, so we thought, well, the simplest thing would be to get some sort of space heater for that room, okay? So, of course, if you get something like this, these are nice because, well, you know, you can get them with some pretty good features. This one, if it tips over, it'll turn itself off, but you still have this very hot grate right here in front. So if it were to fall over like this, you know, a pet or a child, someone knocks it down, you know, you could still damage the carpet by doing that. So it's just something, plus it just kind of blasts the room with heat for a while. Yes, it has an off timer. Yes, it has a thermostat, but would you really want to leave that on all night? Uh, you know, so, so this one just didn't seem like the ideal solution long term. And so we decided to go with the NV heat unit. Now, uh, the nice thing about this, it mounts the wall. Um, the top of it can get hot, okay? Uh, but that's only if you, you know, if you hold your hand on top of it while it's running, you know? It's not so hot. Let me just say, if you put your hand on it while it's running, you've got enough time to say, my, that's kind of hot. I should probably take my hand away and then take your hand away without burning yourself, okay? It's just uh, everything that my, my wife did the research and everything she found out about it appears to be true. Uh, it doesn't have moving parts, it doesn't have a fan, just kind of uses the natural flow of air from the bottom out through the top to, to keep the air going. So it's quiet, uh, it's safe, you know, except for that one part on the very top of it. If you're just touching the side of it and stuff, it, it is not hot. Uh, the wall above it could be a little bit warm as well, and I'm going to do a little test uh, with a, you know, to test the temperature of the wall while it's running. But uh, all the selling points appear to be true. And the, the other nice thing about it, now that I've had it running for a few days, um, I estimate that it uses about three or four kilowatt hours per day the way we use it. Now, what this tells you on the box is that it, it, it costs, it heats a, heats a room for as little as four cents an hour. Now, four cents an hour, that's probably based on the fact that it's rated for 475 watts. So about half a kilowatt hour per hour if you left it on all the time. And, you know, depending on the price of electricity where you are, that's probably a valid claim, four cents an hour to run. Now, it also has a thermostat on the top of it, so you can turn that to whatever your desired temperature is, and it's not going to run constantly if that thermostat is not turned up all the way. So I figure, you know, we've got it only turned up to about maybe three out of ten on the scale on that uh, thermostat. And that seems to keep the room white, right where we want it. Again, without the heater, it's just a little bit cool because it does get some of what the central air system in, in the house is doing, but just not getting quite enough compared to all the other rooms. So again, another thing is I turn it on around dinner time, leave it on overnight, and turn it off in the morning. So it does not run during the day when uh, the room doesn't feel that that cool compared to the rest of the house. It's only overnight that it, I seem to want to use it. So those are the factors. I don't leave it on, turn on all the time. And even when it is on, the thermostat control means that it's not constantly running. It is going to cycle by itself based on that thermostat setting. So with that in mind, I figure it's adding about three or four kilowatt hours per day to our uh, electric bill. But then again, we don't have a traditional electric bill because we're using solar panels. So uh, we tend to have a little bit of a surplus every year on how much electricity we use. So I'm only concerned about how, how many kilowatt hours total is it going to use each year? And is that going to drop me down below my surplus? You know, is it going to take away from my surplus completely? Or am I still going to have a little bit of surplus left over? So based on the way I'm paying for my solar panels now, really the, the price of the electricity that's being used by this heater is, is zero. And that's my situation because, again, I've got solar panels mixed in with it. So, so far, all the claims seem to be right. It's safe. It's not too hot. It was easy to install. 
and uh, it's keeping the room just 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 helping that temperature you know it only needs to help it about four or five degrees based on where it would normally be overnight on a cold night and it's doing it and it's quiet and works well now uh, as far as mounting it okay this won't work like you know the space heater you can just set it on the floor and you know as long as it's upright it will work but with this one it's only going to work when it's mounted to the wall and uh, you've got a little screw that kind of helps to lock it in place on the wall. If it's not locked in place on the wall, it's made so that it won't even work. So you got to mount it. I did a brief video to show how it's mounted so you'd see just how simple that really is. All right, here's the mounting hardware that comes with it. These are anchors for installing it on a masonry wall. These are for uh, drywall, so I'm going to be using these. You don't need these if you're going straight into a stud, but I, I think uh, I'm going to have to use these for my drywall installation. Then there are three mounting screws. The third one is optional, and I don't think I'm going to use that one. You'll use these mounting screws with these mounting clips, so you have two of those. And then this is a locking screw, and I'll show you how that's done, but it has a little uh, Allen key uh, head on that and it comes with this little allen key tool So I'll be showing you how that's done now when you first unpack it the heater is going to be inside this cardboard frame So you take it out and this frame becomes your mounting template What you do is you turn it around like this and they want you to unfold the sides But uh, leave the top and the bottom folded up if you decide where you want it on the wall and then you just set it up like this. The idea is you've got little guide holes here. They're going to tell you the perfect place to mount your uh, mounting clips and either have it be six inches off the ground or eight inches off the ground, depending on which of these holes you've chosen. So I've decided I want to go with the higher hole and have it just be a little bit higher off the ground. In fact, I'm also going to put, put it just, just a few inches higher than that still. So let me poke this hole out for the uh, for the eight inch marking and again I've just raised it about four inches with this tissue box I've decided this is about where I want it to be let me just double check my measurement because I want it uh, you know it's kind of sort of centered on this piece of wall that I have here okay so that's where I want it I'm just gonna make a quick mark here and using this other mounting hole, I'm going to make another mark there. And before I actually poke the anchors in there, I'm going to check for level. Okay, that looks really, really close. But uh, I'm just going to, when I poke it in, I'm going to put this one just, just a slightly bit uh, lower in. And I think I'll be just right. I can eyeball that. So instead of just poking it in there and hoping that it gets, uh, gets in there just right, if I, you know, just dig it in real hard, I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill this with just a little, little help from DeWalt. Okay. And see how that goes. Yeah, I'm going to get another bit and I'm gonna drill that out a little bit more with the drill. Here we go. All right, pretty easy. Okay, then see if I can do this by hand just so that I'm nice and gentle with it. Okay, that's ready to go. And pretty simple from here. This uh, little mounting clip is marked up. And so I just put the screw through there. And I'll screw this in by hand as well. I give you a nice long screw just in case you were going into a stud, I guess. You got plenty of screw there. I'll make sure that that's nice and square, nice and uh, upright. I think we're good to go there. I'll put in the other one now. Incidentally, before I started, I did go over this wall with a stud finder 
just to double check and make sure that there was not a stud right exactly where, where I wanted to mount. There's one over here uh, just a couple inches to the side, but I knew that I wasn't going to hit a stud if I chose this as my mounting location. All right, these clips that I just installed here are going to line up with these little receptacles on the back of the heater when I turn it around and put it on the wall. Also, as an option, you could mount another screw right here, which would be right around there. There's a spot on the template that shows you where to make that hole if you thought you needed an extra, um, you know, a little extra security by having one more screw right in there. But I've decided I don't need that. I'm going to put a chair here and there's not going to be much, uh, this is not going to be disturbed very much. These two mounting uh, brackets are going to be, they're going to be sufficient. I don't need the extra screw. Now this is going to be secured to the wall with a screw that goes down here in this bottom corner. And that's the one that uses the uh, Allen key. That Allen key is going to kind of push this up and there's a locking bar that starts way down here and goes all the way up to the, to the little receptacle above it. And so that screw is going to just hold that in real tight. So before I get it too far into place and too awkward to work with, I'm just going to just going to put that in a little bit finger tight. I'll get that screw started before it's too much in place and difficult to reach. Because at this point, I'm ready to just uh, mount this right up to the mounting brackets. So let's see if I can line that up. Right about there. Okay, that's it. And now because I've turned it around, that mounting screw with the uh, Allen key is going to be on this side. So here it is. I'm just going to take a moment and uh, tighten that down. Okay, folks, I think that's it, really. I, uh, I got it up there, and there's a little bit of play back and forth, but we're going to leave it alone. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I opted for the model that's not hardwired, so it's, uh, it's right here near this, this plug, ready to go. Uh, there's a way to tuck the excess cable in, and I think I'll, I'll do that in just a moment. But uh, right there, it's ready to go. And, uh, well, it looks like... Looks like it was already turned on. I must have been playing with the button last night before I installed it. So there it is. Now it's turned on and there's an adjustment up here, thermostat adjustment to choose, uh, you know, whatever, whatever temperature you want. I'm going to let it roll for a while and see what happens. So now that we've been using it for a week, you know, it's rated at uh, 475 watts when it's running and I measured it with this kilowatt easy meter and uh, found out it, on here it shows about 535 watts when it's running so you know um, that may not be a big deal but again that's that's what i actually measured with that also i measured the temperature with one of these little uh, you know laser th infrared thermometer things and um, what i found was that uh, and near as i could tell if you had your hand right on top of it right in that area right there it was coming out about 150 degrees. So that's why I think you've got plenty of time to realize, hey, that's hot, and pull your hand away. Even a young child would pull their hand away before really getting any kind of serious burn off of that. Just like advertised, the front of it uh, is only about 90 degrees. You really have to put your hand right directly on top of it to feel any kind of what seems like uh, painful heat. And again, you're not going to get burned unless you really hold it there. Just on the wall above that. So, so the wall um, above where the heater is mounted does get warm. So about six inches up from that space that I thought was about 150 degrees, it's more like 130 degrees. And when you get up to about 18 inches up, then you're down to 120 degrees or below. I had some pictures hung on that wall. I've taken them away because I just didn't know how much heat damage there might be with that heat just rising up the wall all the time. Uh, something that might affect something like a picture, but I don't think it's hot enough that's going to do any, any kind of damage to just the regular paint on the wall. So my only concern is I'm, I'm just going to clear that wall for a while until I get a little more brave about hanging something on that wall. Otherwise, you know, I'd say everything that's been advertised seems to have worked out. It's quiet. 
it's efficient, uh, it's safe, it's, uh, well, quiet is a big deal. My wife likes to say it's just not disruptive. And again, it just takes the chill off of that room, just giving a little help. It's not going to, we're not using it to try and heat up the whole room, just to supplement it. And so far, so good. About $140, but they usually offer some sort of special on their website. A lot of times it's, you get a little discount if you buy two of them. We got a, a discount right around Halloween where you got a discount even if you just bought one. So um, see what you think of them, but we are sold. It is exactly what we needed for that room.